All right, let's get started with Adrax Agatone, or Ton. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Models assembled, we have a Vallejo Black over a Auto Primer Prime. So I just like to black them out and kind of get them really primed, divided it up into the main character, the backpack, and the base. Um, we're using these uh, Jolly Lark holders, which I've drilled in for the pins to hold the objects in place. And now we're going to get a base coat of our extra dark green and our other colors that we're going to be using. This, these will be brushed on are the sick green and the necrotic green. So I've already thinned down my extra dark green. It is at about a little under half thinner. This is going to be my, my dark, dark base color and I'm going to go back and use some washes in the shadows once we get this base coat on. That way I can work up from there and not have to worry about going back down on the color scale. Now this extra dark green, a little bit more muted, but that's okay because we're about to punch it with this sick green. Sick green Pretty saturated, and if you guys know me, I like saturated color. I'm only really worried about the armor bits for this guy. So anything else that gets overspray, not super concerned about. Some of these areas just want to get a little bit of green on it because they're not going to get a lot of attention. He does have a green breather on his mouth, so... Hit that. Just make sure we get all those armor bits. A little elbow back there. Airbrush clogging because I'm talking too much. And just a little slow agitations of the trigger. I'm not going for like a rattle can dumping paint on the model. Just a little bit here and there. We're gonna take our Drakenhoof Nightshade and Nun Oil, and we got one of the new Turbo Dork uh, dry palettes, and we're mixing up our shade from the two different pools. So I got Nun Oil here and the Nightshade here, just to get a little bit more of a darker, desaturated blue for our shadows. And I've already gone ahead and washed these areas so you can see the effect of the dry wash, because if I just put it on wet, just looks like that it's all shiny in the crevices but don't worry about overages with this we're going to come back and blend the armor this is just to make sure that the cracks and crevices have a nice dark complement with the blue and then the nun oil just to bring that value down a little bit so you can see i'm being a little bit sloppy and messy and when it dries kind of blends in a little bit but we're going to be taking our base colors and building these highlights back up all right, I have skipped ahead one because I wanted to make sure that who I'm painting this for actually liked the color scheme that we were going for um, with the colors that I was using. So I did a few test areas. Plus, I haven't painted a salamander in quite a while. So I wanted to make sure that I still could. <laughs> so <clears throat> we take our base dark green. So we're doing the um, extra dark green. And... You can clean up some of those wash areas if you want. If your highlights are gonna go over those wash areas, um, don't worry about it. But then again, um, you can always clean things up to, for sanity's sake. Like sometimes if I'm looking at something that kind of confuses me about what I need to paint. So we're stepping this up. Again, I'm a layer-based painter, so I can see here that I've got a pretty decent increase uh, lighting scheme is kind of a general high level tabletop light scheme. So we're going kind of from the the high points, the outside up, outside up, can't illustrate outside up, um, kind of hard to illustrate and small. So we're going up the side of the leg like a triangle with the brightest lights being up toward the top. Not Not super directional. I sketch out 
my highlights and you can see on this side like I've gone with this color and I've kind of marked out the boundaries of where my highlights are going to be so you can see the separation here of the dark and the light I'd say a quick step you can do to sort of get your general uh, general lighting I'm going to go more for the top of the foot on this side since the hammer is kind of in the way so I'm still keeping some thought process to it I'll just do the whole front of the foot there just wrap it around and then I usually start edge highlighting when I get to this pure color so let me pick an area and actually finish out here, we'll do the front of the foot because that's an easy, easy illustration since we're going kind of toward the middle. Let me bring it in. You see my brush strokes move toward where I want my highlight to be. And then this is bright enough that I'm going to pull a couple edges. Again, it's one of those sanity things. And that's too thick. I'll have to go back and fix it. Or I'll just edge highlight over it and see if it works because sometimes if you're bleeding into an edge highlight, it works. It's okay to make mistakes, right? These are paints. You can paint over. Also, painting on video can be difficult. For those that don't know. Alright, this is our pure sit green. And we're stepping up pretty fast. You know, not, not studio level, but high level. And then from our sit green to our Necrotic green, you can use um, scorpion green, it has a little less yellow in it. You can also use, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the, the other color, the GW color. It's, it's like one of the Necron colors. Edge highlight. So once you get, like if you can do the front of a foot like this on a flat space, the rest is theory and shape. So if you can if you can blend or you can layer, because this isn't even blended, it's just stepped up layers, right? It just blends when you move far away, right? If you can do this, all you have to do is think about light and shadow once you get that. You get this this recipe down, these colors. You don't have to worry about controlling the color anymore. You just gotta think about where the paint should be because you got the how and there really isn't a why unless you're going to like write an artist statement alongside your work which can I mean I'd like to see miniature painting get into like a high art and see with this so we got our, our step up because bright's over here bright over here I can put another little like bounce reflection over here when I say bounce reflection it's like there's there's like a light source or lights coming down and hitting an area and it's popping back up and it's touching the model so we need to highlight it and even though it's down here in shadow we're gonna work this up and I have my layers mixed up so I'm just gonna grab those paints this will be a little bit smaller it can be darker you don't have to take it all the way up Try and get it in the light. See, I noticed I had too much paint on my brush there, like where I could see the actual glob of paint, so I moved it, took it off. And we'll go probably about that bright, right? We went up to our necrotic green, but we didn't go pure necrotic green, right? So it just gives like an interesting little reflection on the side of the foot. You can do that anywhere on models. like. In here, like I increase the edge highlight, put a little bit of, of a, a, a lower dark highlight, you know, um, trace the shape here, which is pretty common in GW models, and then it's much brighter on this side. When I get to the gold, or when I finish the green, we can go over that, um, but for now, I'm going to paint in all of the green armor, so next time you see this model, it'll be all green, well, all the green parts will be green, and then we'll work on the gold bits. Green's done. Uh, only took a few hours uh, to get this 
fairly um, blended green. There's still layer lines and stuff, but that's okay. Uh, we are going for a very high tabletop, not, again, super smooth, blended, uh, but something that's going to look really good from about a foot away, um, maybe even closer. But now let's address the gold. Well, let's talk about the greens a little bit. You can see where my, my kind of V comes in to the model. It kind of rotates around the outside of the model because this foot sticking out on the side. Definitely want to be recognizable as salamanders while the cape is covering up a lot of the, uh, the back of the model. A um, few little cheater areas, you know, like the inside of the legs and things, just going up to like a dark mid-tone, but not going all the way up as far as uh, our, our very yellowy green like we did up around the head and on the, all these little war gear face mask bits. Um, so the yellow is my typical recipe for non-metallic gold, which is uh, mahogany brown from Reaper, or you can use, um, what is it, uh, oh, the Vallejo Air, it's like tank brown, um, or there, there's a mahogany and, uh, model air as well that's really nice. The Sculphorus Brown for our yellow tone, and then just a white. You can use any white, um, I'm using Game Color White, I switch back and forth between brands, but for the most part, like, whites, whites are whites. Um, so I have a little bit of Sculphorus Brown here left on my palette. Let's see if it's still active. Looks like it's separated, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And then I've base coated everything in mahogany that's going to be gold already. So again, one of those like little uh, save your brain uh, things, you know, put put the gold on like let me know where the objects are so I can kind of feel good about finishing them. It's like one of those completionist mentalities. Um, so I'm gonna show you on the rim here of the leg how we do or how I do my gold. Take some of my, you can see a mixture here, take some of my uh, mahogany, we'll mix in a little bit. This is a little bit faster of a gold. Thinking about where light would hit so I'm looking at this object, so you can obviously see like a bright point already, and we have our light moving across the leg here, so there's gonna be a bright point here. So I wanna map that out on the figure as I'm painting, so I can layer in between them. This is where the thought process happens. It doesn't happen on the base coat, it doesn't happen on the highlights, it happens on the first new color that we put on the model. I want a little bounce light over here on the side, and then this broad highlight here. Then I'm going to mix in a little bit more of my Sculphorus. I'll come back, make sure that the paint isn't wet so I don't reactivate it, and go inside those areas, right? So, see if I can get you to see here. We have our base coat, our next layer, and then the previous layer. So the bigger these areas are from our uh, previous coat, the harder it is going to be to get your final highlights in. Um, usually people will go, starting out when I watch people, they'll go too far away from their previous layer and that'll cause that, that highlight to get too narrow when you get there. It's like, oh man, I'm already to yellow and I got like just a little point highlight. It's like, you need to expand your highlights a little bit, All right? Add a little bit more. And this will be the last one before we just go to pure Sculphorus. And so I'm at this color. I feel like I want to start edge highlighting. So I'll drag an edge highlight across the bottom, across the top here. I'll rotate the model to make it easier. And hit my edge there. Then we'll go to our pure yellow Sculphorus brown. Across here, here. I didn't hit that previous color, so I'm gonna just boop dot it in between. And then a little bit of an edge highlight. Again, 
So this will bleed into our highlight instead of going all the way around the object. You see how I'm kind of stopping it before I get to the end there and not really linking them up in the center. And then yellow, a little bit of white. That's our next layer. And again, bleeding that edge highlight. Not really connecting them, stopping them before our previous layer of edge highlight. And then you can do another mix or you can just go to straight white. We're going a little bit faster with our color. So a straight white here. Not going to hit it down here because that's not really in our direct light. And just a little bit of edge highlight. And there we have a little shiny knee pad. And it's that quick. Um, again, it's about layering and placement is all done when you're here, this color. So taking your sculpturus and your mahogany, and that's your map color. And it's easy to fix. Like if you get it somewhere you don't want, just take some of your base color, coat over it, and it's done. Um, and we're going to think about light not too hard with this. You know, these little highlights and stuff, they're placed along that main line. And then little bounce lights are just kind of added in here and there for interest. If you feel like it's going to look good, do it. And that's the way you learn. All right, we got our golds complete now on Mr. What is this guy's name again? It's been a day. Adrax. I am so up to date on my model names. All right, so just, again, basic reflections and things, little bounce highlights, painting the, the wings with the gold kind of brightening up as it gets lower, and then the support or the veins of the wings taking the top highlights. Um, general sort of volumetric shading for the uh, little pauldron, that's not a pauldron, whatever the name of this thing is. Um, skulls, keeping them a little bit darker, but let's look at the flamer now. So <clears throat> you can use this same um, three colors for that. So what I did is I took some of the mahogany and added white to it. So in our gold recipes, we never add white to the mahogany because it desaturates it. But this is perfect if you want to do a copper, kind of like a burnished metal for the uh, the heat, uh, again, name stuff. Um, and then add just a little bit of yellow to it to warm it back up, so to take a little bit of that pink out. And I'm gonna look, it's kind of like a forward highlight on this. Actually, let's do the backwards highlight because it's going to be darker toward the uh, darker toward the front. And just like that, we made a decision for non-metallic. So this is sort of a, a lighter, warm burgundy, pinkish kind of like a terracotta. So like a step up from the mahogany base. I'm just pulling this back. Getting there, our volume first, and then we'll look at edge highlights after. Uh, again, layers. So I'm just filling in behind this. I'm just going from the front back. I'm gonna grab my right color. This is the second layer. Probably start edge highlighting on the next layer. Edge highlights will help blend things out too. And I apologize, I got some pretty hard direct light coming in from the window in the sun, so it's making the camera go darker. Feels like darker. Now we're starting to get that more coppery feel, and that this is where I hit edges. Let me see how that blended that out a little bit. And there's not an edge here on the top, but there is that kind of crimped roll. So I'm going to pull a line from the front. I see we're starting to get that kind of burnished metal look, coppery burnished metal. 
again back from this side kind of having to do this all at once because if we do just one side of it it's going to make the intersections a little harder to hit this is our third color my stomach's growling haven't had lunch yet and then I'll go back and edge highlight down in here but all these edges you want to build those up getting close to our last color so I'll have one more layer after this so this is going kinda to the back bottom corner pulling some edges out yeah this has like a touch of yellow in it just a touch that's enough to keep it warm and not just desaturate toward pink with the mahogany. And then our last here, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow back into it. and that's where you'll want to go in now and hit all these little bottom edges and that's giving us that nice sharp edge for those holes and just the bottom corner here Pulling the edge highlight the hard way with the tip of the brush. And then there you go. We got our kind of burnished metal heat guard. Let's work on the ribbing or ribbed objects next. These areas here in between the hands, the bends and folds of the, um, the armor connections in here. And also the flat black panels. So along the hammer. And on the gun, there might be a few other ones, like the little hoses and stuff here. Um, the backpack's black, but we're going with green for this guy. We're going to have some black elements or black armor panels, but for the most part, um, green. Uh, for that, I have my Chimera black. It's just a little bit heavier body black. And a Prussian blue. We're also going to add white to this mix. So, parent pools, take your black move it away don't just mix those colors together you want to be able to go back and control your paints then we'll add a little bit of white now I've already base coated the those objects in a flat black straight black so I mean about parent pools like I want a little bit more of a blue in my base and then come in and let's demonstrate here on these ribs so just a brush stroke straight in and pulling down that blue and then we'll add a little more white Not a little bit more of a step than that so we'll come up Add a little bit of blue again. Because every time we add white, we're going to desaturate our color. So if we want a stronger, kind of off gray, blue gray, I'm going to make sure and add some of that blue back. And you can see the natural sunlight highlight in these on the other side, but the difference you get with exaggerating. And then one more step, we're not going to go up super high. We'll keep this layer more desaturated so you can see our steps here. And then come in. And either a small dot or a really thin line. Whichever you're more comfortable with. 
And there we go. We got our hoses highlighted. We're going to go in and do that on everything. Now, when you're edge highlighting, your first layer will be all the edges, and then you'll just start pulling those edge highlights closer and closer to the corners. Um, you can go wider if you're if you're more comfortable with that, and then just go smaller with each edge highlight. But I like to pull mine toward the corners. And now we're working on our lighter non-metallics. So I've painted up some examples here on this gun. What I did is went and based any area that is going to be that lighter non-metallic color with our mid-tone blue-gray that we used on the hoses. Uh, now we take that up a step. So same step you would have um, where you did your highlight on these hoses is the first step on these guys. So I'm going to paint the front of this hammer up. And we're going pretty drastic with our... Uh, because there's a lot of areas to address. So not super blendy, doesn't need to be. You can kind of feather it out like I'm doing here with the brush. And when I say feather, it means dragging the brush strokes, rapid motions, using the tip of the brush to create kind of a, a texture there. I like cross hatching, if you've ever heard of that. And then take a yellow, so a very desaturated yellow, but a value that's a step up from this color. So you will see another kind of separation in value shift. So using the yellow to kind of represent our sunlight. Another little crescent here at the bottom. Feather it out a little bit. Make sure we're doing it fairly clean. Got like a little bit of a overage there, but maybe a little nitpicky. And then a pure white. So this pure white goes inside that yellow layer as our final highlight. So it, it brings the desaturation of that yellow back down. And it gives us that, that kind of shine for the metal. Now every little object kind of has that sort of treatment to it. When you have cylinders, you might do two sides of the cylinder, especially if they're really visible. Um, for this guy, you know, I got a little bit of an overage here, so I just go back with my base color and just clean that up. I'll wrap it around here so we got more of a nice circle for the end of that hammer. And then we're ready to address all our other objects. So for him, this little grate here, he's got like a little stud for his ear. Um, and then these little hose accoutrements and you know, little valves and stuff in case he wants to, you know, turn off his uh, weapon. Uh, and then here and the back here. So these are cylinders, so they'll have a strong top highlight and then a little bounce reflection at the bottom. Um, but going to go ahead and finish that up and then we'll move on to the next. All right, we have our metal done. I did a little bit of scratch work on the hammer here. Uh, just to show that he's been smacking people. Um, I got an email from our client that said he wants the um, hammer to emit heat. So I'm going to go with the lava theme for the hammer. And then have these recesses in here glowing like really, really bright. And just have the whole head of the hammer details and all just be this uh, nice hot lava looking hammer. Um, that being said, uh, that means we're going to need to airbrush a little bit. So we're going to finish out areas around it and then the cloak. Before we start, so I got my Ferrari red, and I have this Purity Seal base coated in mahogany. So I'm going to take some of this mahogany and the Ferrari red, do its two-stage highlight on these. Just want to bring up the saturation of the color. So making sure I get all these little nice round nodules of the Purity Seal, because it has more than just, just a circle. And then he has this little uh, tube beside his head. You know those Christmassy accents. Everybody knows red and green goes together. And it is almost Christmas. At the time of filming. And then we'll go straight Ferrari. Still a little wet down here, but that's okay. We can use that to do like kind of a spot wet blend. I'm going to wet blend in a little spot like that. Just kind of agitate the paint and then pick up the brush from the middle of the pool. And that'll uh, kind of soften those transition edges. 
And pick an angle of attack for this tube. His eyes are going to be so fun to paint. A nice highlight on that tube, a little breather tube. So now I'm going to do several base coats on this hammer of a uh, very light yellow, that same yellow I've been using for our steel. That'll be the beginning of our lava. And while those coats dry, I'm going to paint the cloak black. And we're going to get just a nice airbrush fade on the cloak before addressing scales. All right, we've got a few coats of our yellow on the hammer. The black on the cape is nice and opaque, so we're ready to do a little bit of airbrush work. I got some off-white in the airbrush, and we're going to do kind of a controlled zenithal. Very controlled because you don't want to get any of this on the, uh, the finished armor. Uh, but I'm going to be kind of top down the scales and a little bit of the... Uh, got a weird thing going on in the airbrush. Scales and a little bit of the fabric of the, the cloak, but I'm going real, real... My airbrush has a frog in it. Oh, it stopped. It died. Must have been a bubble. But just a real light highlight on these areas. And then we're going to hit it with a little bit of dry brush for the scales. Very controlled dry brush. Just to bring them out and then we'll use a contrast on the scales followed by an edge highlight. So I just want a little bit of color to bleed over onto the cape. I don't want to get super, super bright because it is just a black lizard skin. On the inside we gotta do that fleshy. All right, so got the scales highlighted, got a little bit of highlight on those. Now let's get a dry brush ready. All right, we're gonna get going with the dry brush. So we got some more off-white on our palette. And I'm actually just gonna wipe it off on here until I've no, I've got very little paint on the brush. And then go in. Just get our edges. I'm trying to avoid the actual cape with this step. It's more about getting those scales. Getting a nice edge highlight on them. At this level, we can't go in and do this sort of highlighting with a controlled edge highlight because it would take about as long to paint just the cape as it would the model. A lot of scales. So we're doing a little bit of cheating. Getting those edges. So they'll show up with a contrast, and the contrast will blend out the the chalkiness of the dry brush. I'll finish this up, and then we'll get our contrast going. Now that we got the dry brush on, I'm just taking Flesh Terrors Contrast and putting it over each of the scales. I'm um, trying to avoid the middle it's just a little bit. It's okay if you go over. We're going to hit this with kind of a secondary wash in the cracks and crevices just to bring that flesh tears down where need be. And you can kind of see how the, uh, the highlights from our dry brush are blending out. They're softening up and we're getting a nice uh, gradient on those scales. And now that we have our contrast on, we're going to put our Reichland Flesh Shade, and you can see how the edges on this have been kind of pulled out with that pre-coat of that dry brush and the airbrush. So now our Reichland is there to kind of go into the cracks, be a little bit softer, not as red, so it kind of shows that there's transition between skin and scale happening. You see how it softens that out almost immediately. Reichland Flesh Shade's got a little bit more of a red tone to it. 
it's not going to be so aggressive that it's going to cover up our reds. I just want that soft color transition between those two areas. As always, with washes, I work fast and push around the pigment. Put it on heavy, move it around. And then when that dries, we'll have a nice soft skin transition. Once our wash is dry, we're gonna take some rosy flush and Vallejo Brown from Model Air. Mix that up as a highlight for the scales or an edge. So this will be the single layer since there are so many of them. Rosy flesh being a good sort of option to white. You don't want things to pink out. That flesh tone makes a really good accent to these deeper darker reds when you don't want them to go pink on you. So about a 50-50 mix value wise and just sort of following the, the contours. You can go in and hit some edges here and there like this if you want. Not super necessary. But, you know these guys instead of doing edges you can just take some Highlights from the top, natural highlights, you know. Little dots on these little scales just to bring them out a little bit more. But we're gonna do the whole cloak like this. We've finished up our scales. We're moving back over to the hammer. By this point, we should have a nice solid yellow coat and we're dry brushing our orange on. So this is a reverse dry brush when you're going from light to dark in dry brushing layers you're making the intersections of the object glow or be brighter and so we're starting with an orange over our yellow we're using tiny 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 dry brush this is one of the knights at the game table brushes and it's it's almost like a stippling motion and a dry brush. Like I want I know I want to hit the edges, but I also want to get some texture in there to represent sort of that haphazard lighting you would get from lava. I'm also making sure to avoid any of my finished surfaces. So I'm not just going in there and going crazy. Being slow and methodical with it. And we're going to move our way to darker red and eventually a black. We'll do a light dry brush of the black and then do some hand edging after that. Alright, so now we're to our red and we're taking our dry brush, we're stippling a little bit more, still dragging edges. And we're just kind of working from the outside in, leaving like a little bit of our previous orange. The red I use is a mixture of a little bit of contrast, the Ferrari red, and some mahogany. And it's right here. So it's a little bit of a brownish red. Now you guys are probably like, this guy just choose a damn color instead of mixing everything. No. So stippling around these edges here, kind of giving that mottled, flowing heat look. Keeping our yellow in the crevices. So it looks like the heat's coming from within. Yeah, hammer should be getting getting warm now. We're moving on to the black now. So this is more of a stipple and an edge highlight. 
So I'm taking a fairly thin black because I don't want super, super hard coverage with it. I want to hit edges and have a blendy interaction with the colors below. So I get some of that, that red and stuff coming through. Just to show that the edges are cooling off faster than the insides. I'm just stippling to find those little little cool areas that are on the surface of the hammer. Kind of opposite of what you would do if you were painting like a yellow hammer with a black base. But real gentle with it. And just layering up over time to get that, that heat and that lava. Alright, we got our black onto our molten hammer here. We're going to do one final step, which is to add some Ayindan contrast over this. So just a rich, richen up, that's a uh, term. Our, uh, our blends, our colors here, I'm not trying to soak out all the bright points, so I'll take my brush and pull out any of those areas that get too saturated and blow out the, like the really light uh, yellow you can see here, put it in there, wipe off, and pull it back out, so real quick. Get those nice rich hot tones all right we're gonna go ahead and take earth and base coat our purity seal now i got a bunch of earth because we're also going to use that color to do base coats on the inside of the cloak but we're going to mix it down a little bit get it a little bit darker and add some green tone to it it's kind of a compliment to the uh the armor because it is framing the armor, like he's standing in front of it, so it's framing him. It's not blaming him for a crime, but artistically. Like a picture frame. So a couple coats of this earth here, and then on the inside of the cloak, we're going to take some of our extra dark green. And our earth. Get us a nice base for that lizard skin. Add a little bit of black to it. Desaturate it just a little bit more, but a greenish brown. That dark tone. And then up here, that's what we're looking for. Because this will highlight up nicely. So get a base coat all the way in and then it goes the the inside of the skin kind of crests over so any of these kind of square edges at the bottom of the cloak you can paint those around it's okay if you go over a little bit on that because it's just the the inside of the skin sort of showing up on the outside of the cloak and everything and we'll wash it down and then highlight it up. We got an earth shade wash on our purity seals here and then we did the same steps just with the paintbrush, no dry brush for the uh, little claw and tooth here. So taking a black base and just highlighting up Reichlin flesh shade and then our um, rosy flesh highlights over that with like a little bit of mix so that those those little elements match and they complement around the model so we have that tone kind of in here here and here talking about color balance on models you don't really want something that just exists in one spot um, so now we're going to highlight up the purity seal and that's just straight with our earth and then we already have some off-white on our palette that we're going to use uh, to to bring it up even further before we do some lettering on it so for here i'm just going for lots of texture so edge highlighting these little folds making sure we're bringing up the shapes that are in this purity seal the purity seals on the characters are always uh 
much more elaborate than those on the ragtag normal space marines normal space marines got those flat purity seals these guys have wadded them up put them in their lunchbox and then slapped them on before battle got that plastic bag that you've been saving under your counter for 10 years look to them so leaving some of these deeper darker shadows and working up our edges and I'm gonna go ahead and just layer this up if you got a way that you do t purity seals like be consistent with your army all right time to go in and add text on these purity seals we've highlighted all the way up to that off-white uh, now we're just taking a little bit of watered down black you want a consistency that flows off the brush real nice and you want to wipe a little bit off so it doesn't pool and then I'll go right here. I've already done one of them, so you can kind of see the text on there. And just the very point of the brush. Going in there and adding just the... Write my name. You can see it right there. See, it says clay. It's just real small. Need a microscope for it. I like to go a little bit thinner with the, the paint just because it looks like the the brown from the the seal is kind of showing through. Even with all the shadows and the texture, you're still getting that illusion of there being text on there. Alright, now I want to do some pre-coating on the fire areas we're gonna come back to the cape here in a little bit the inside of the cape we've got that all coated with that uh that greenish brown there um, so we're gonna take our pale yellow or you can mix it up if you got the color that's fine and i'm gonna take this pale yellow and we got these flames on his belt here so i had almost forgotten about these the paint's really dry add some water to my brush and we're just going to do a base coat here that'll help us layer up our colors I like to work light to dark when it comes to flames just get my nice solid base coat in there instead of like trying to layer over the reds layer over lighter colors really well but they don't go dark to light really well we're just going to put this on here probably do a couple coats and then come back and start shading it in. Once you get your coats on your little belt accentuation, we're going to take some of the Chimera Orange. You can use any orange you want. This one just has a uh, nice amount of pigment in it. Other oranges will probably blend better than this Chimera Orange. But we're going to start about right here. Just move it up. I did a little brush lick there just to get the paint going in the right consistency trying not to hit my my gold chimera is a very thick pigment I've used it in classes and I have differing opinions from students on whether or not they like chimera <laughs> um, I thought it'd be cool for people to be able to use a you know pretty expensive product that's hard to get and you know something you might not usually buy for yourself because they're primaries you know people usually already have red yellow blue orange purple like those are the the first colors you get and to rebuy those in a different brand black and white right but I've stopped because I had a lot of people that were like I can't use this they weren't used to it and you know eliminating variables when trying new things so use colors that you're comfortable with when you're painting especially when you're taking classes like I know we just got back from warfare and we were painting with the Duncan uh, line of paint which is really close in style to the GW paints and how they act uh, cost wise of course much better. GW is always going to be 
high end costs, cost cost, and I would argue that their quality of paint isn't phenomenal. Uh, so, just something to think about. All right, let's add a red. Um, I got a Ferrari red here. It's just what's available. Put it down here by this other little pool of Ferrari red. And then darken it up toward the top here with this red. This Ferrari red is actually really close to this orange. Oh, look at this guy. I can get out one more color red. And then we're going to do the same thing we did on the uh, hammer. Grab our Iendin yellow. And just do a coat over this whole thing. Just to blend it out. And then punch that this uh, starter yellow. Let's see. Where is the red? Get another Chimera. The red. You can see the difference here side by side. If I can get any out. There we go, little dot. You can see the intensity of that red next to the Ferrari red. Pretty intense stuff. It's okay, this guy's, he's a focal point, right? Center of the army. And then look for my eye end in yellow. All right, found my eye end in. I put it away. Who the hell does that? Putting away paint. Get my liner out. We're just going to coat over these flames here. Blend them together. Put it on heavy. And then soak it up. You can see it's kind of running into the belly here. That don't matter. Can just soak it back out. So treating this like a glaze, right? So if I wanted to blend these colors together, I'll take a weak pigment like my yellow, water it down and glaze it in. So now we've got that. I might take, I might, I'm gonna, gonna take a little bit of this orange here some of this yellow I'm gonna make just a tiny little transition dot because I think that transitions like a little bit harsh right there so I've mixed these two colors and then I just stipple that right there do dots not brush strokes just push your right on the line to soften that uh, break in color. All right, let's go back to our cape. We're gonna dry brush a little bit, kind of a little more aggressive dry brush. Um, I took the dark green that we did, added a little bit of that uh, pale yellow and some white, and then I'm just gonna hit real soft and slow right here on this texture of the cape. Anywhere that there's those little, looks like cut grooves, just hitting in there. And then you can also kind of use your dry brush as a way to edge. So if you drag it sideways along the edges of your figure, you get nice little highlights. And the cape has this sort of powdery, dry skin texture. So I'm okay with the look of that. I think it's a good look. And sometimes, you know, we're doing high-level models, not necessarily studio or display. We need to speed up some areas of the figure, not necessarily go crazy on everything. And this is one of those opportunities, because it's not really part of the uh, the armor or the the gold or anything like that. It's, it's one of those... Uh, standoffish colors and textures that can be added to the figure. All right, let's get the handle of his hammer. So it's red in the box art, so it's gonna be red here. We're just gonna take our Flesh Terrors red 
get a nice deep base coat of this red on here and then we'll go up and we'll highlight some uh, some areas kind of in the same way we did the scales but we're not going to dry brush we're just going to do edge highlights following the pattern and we're going in and highlighting up the texture on our hammer handle so I'm taking that pure red that we used up here just a second ago and finding a comfortable position and then you hit all the angles you can at the same time. Let me move my light a little bit so if we can get this in the light. A little bit of paint and then just pull. So I'm hitting them all in kind of sequence instead of trying to turn and highlight each shape individually I hit all the shapes running down the handle in the same line there. And, get away. and then we're gonna take a dot of our rosy flesh here maybe a mix of the rosy flesh and red like that and then at the peak of every diamond so the highest point from just to hit right at the top of that little texture. And just do that on the top side of the hammer because that's what's catching your light. We're going to highlight up our loincloth now that we have our handle highlighted up. You can see that a little bit better from that angle. Um, so just doing edges and volumes for this guy. And then we got to go back and do our freehand. This is something that if you're not comfortable with, go ahead. You can skip it. Um, or you can just paint back over it, you know, don't do your, uh, your highlights and just try to do your freehand and if it doesn't turn out, then it's a, it's a black loincloth, so you can just paint right back over it. You already got the fire here, so don't worry about it. Gonna paint over 90% of this, uh, highlighting that I'm doing, but I just do it for sanity's sake. Because it's automatic. So this is a combination of black and the off-white. So I have a little bit of off-white here. Which isn't going to change things much. Give you like a little bit of a natural tone. I don't know, they make his, like, his cloak look pretty shiny. We're going to stay not shiny. We're going to go for more of the fabric feel with this stuff. Because he's already surrounded by shiny stuff here. All that non-metallic metal. And that's the inside of the cloak. So I don't think, yeah, that doesn't have fire on it. So we'll pull an edge of this outside edge here. The hard edge. All right. And now it'll be time to sketch in the fire. So fire is one of those amorphous things that's pretty good to start with when you do freehand. So I have a really thin yellow here and I'm not going for coverage. I'm just going for marking, right? I don't want to have thick paint go on. I just want to pull some lines that I can color in later. I'll develop my shape with an easy to flow color. And remember, think these are acrylics, so you can come back and you can adjust, like I added this little hook at the bottom here um, after I pulled it straight down to the bottom of the cloak, and that's okay. This flame's going to rise up a little bit higher. So being just slow and purposeful with my movements, taking my time, a little bit wider of a flame there. All right. And then we're going to do kind of a forked one here that rises up in the middle. So we'll start with the, the outside of the fork, or the inside of the fork, mind you. Make sure I'm doing this on camera. I'm like leaning in too far. Go here. Uh, just wavy, snake-like lines coming down. I 
here and you see this little weird intersection here where there's gonna we're just gonna connect that right make a little loop there where the fire like comes up and around and then over here on this side remember this panel here doesn't go oh, my head's hitting something a little hook above me that's distracting and like another wavy flame coming up there and going down so now we got our fire shape kind of developed and we can go ahead and start filling in I'm gonna add like a little bit more right here off camera and once that's blocked in and if you have any trouble blocking in just remember you can take your black and you can line around the outside take some sun yellow or Again, you can use the Indian yellow after you give in the fades. I'm going to go sun wet yellow this time because I don't want it to run over the lines. I want to keep those sharp lines. And I'm just going to go over and punch the intensity here. I'm going to be a little fast and loose with it because the yellow isn't really going to coat the black super well. This is a air paint as well, so it goes on thin. And it will have punch over those lighter colors. And I got a little flame here. I'm going to take some of this orange here, some of this yellow. This orange is super strong, so it needs a lot of yellow. And then it gets darker as it gets higher, just like on the other layer. So I'm going to sort of trace the outside of the flame shapes. Go into this point. And we're trying to avoid the black, but not like going crazy with control. Just want to make sure I got yellow at the thick, thick bottom areas. Surprised I keep I kept that in frame the whole time. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I looked up and it was in frame. I don't feel like I moved. All right, and just working up like this. Take that the strong pure orange now. Same thing. I'll do one little section here, so I'm not running the video time to two hours and then go straight to your red and almost like a edge highlight that dies out at the top of your red there and do that for all your flames all right eyes on this guy Whew. i just took a little bit of off white and uh hit on the inside of the eye. you can see where i hit the eyebrow there it's like really in there maybe wait to put the head on um I already put the head on, so <laughs> I'm suffering. Uh, take some of your flesh tears red because he has red eyes. And what we're going to try to do is kind of soup it in around there and then pull it out so that the white part in the middle shows up. But he's got a little bit of a gradient going in there. One. Both of these eyes are kind of over. She's got beady, beady, beady little eyes. Tiny. Painting on my arm. I got paint everywhere. And I'm not going to try to highlight. We'll just work around that with the skin tone. Which, let's get to the skin tone. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of purple just a tiny 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 bit of purple um, and then we already have a black out so maybe you find oh, got it right here chimera purple 
and then we need to naturalize that with kind of a middle brown tone have the earth out so let's grab some of that as sort of our skin tone because it's got that dark sort of purpley if we look at the box like these uh there's a purple tone down in our um, base or middle tone with that kind of brown black and then uh, they've squared off his head highlight wise put some some spot highlights there and just kind of accentuated the shapes really uh, so we'll take our black black brown a little bit of purple this purple is really strong so I'm gonna do a brush drag to load it and then some of our off-white to bring it up and that'll be kind of our sketch in tone right there um, and we'll, I'll show you on the model kind of how it looks so we're going over straight black and you can see like as it dries it's got a little bit of that purple tone into it not a lot fix his eyebrow and the bottom of his lid here and then we'll kind of square him off so he's got a uh, highlight here and then like shadow but it goes back in the highlight of the back side of his head and we're going to work in those highlights or a map of the highlights with that first color and then we'll go back and start working it up all right so we got our map here developed and we're going to take more of this off-white to bring up our tone on the skin Again, just accentuating the shapes really he's got his little angry angry marine creases in his forehead and adding a little bit of that off-white each time leaving those creases in the shadows and his beady little peyote eyes kind of a round shape here and then goes across the top of his head widen that out this light this way and up try that get a lot of window light coming in right now I'm trying to fight that it's hard to paint under because it kind of blows out what I'm seeing on the model Just adding little accentuating lines here and there where I see them especially like on that forehead Again, layer based painter that I am. Gonna layer these things up. Making sure we're building up that, that head. Ooh, this way. I'm trying to counteract this stinking glare. There we go. A little bit better. Alright, so let's do one more just to show you guys where I'm headed with the brow so just the top of the object right under the eyes really important sort of accentuate that shape a little nubbin in between his eyebrows forehead creases might add an extra one there you know give them the good old Gordon Ramsay uh, and then work on the just the top of his head you know shade like a a sphere that's been crunched into a cube like shape feathering it a little bit so we're going to continue to to work that up we'll probably go up one or two more steps all right skin's done give you a look at that so mainly concentrating on this ridge of the brow here and just doing little kind of dots here 
to give them that furrowed brow look. Um, so we're going to take some red India ink now that everything's done. I'm looking at it to make sure everything's done. Right? We're going to do some red ink, thin down about two to one uh, with thinner with this red ink because I want it coming out super light. Gives me that control. I'm going to do a little bit of heat bloom coming off the... Uh, what you call it? What's this thing called? A hammer? It's called a hammer. So we're going to build that up real slow. Just to make it look like it's glowing a little bit. And you can see it's getting a little pink here. So in order to counteract that, we're going to come back with yellow. And get a little bit here on his purity seals. There we go. It's got some heat. And then maybe a little bit coming back over here on the cape. Real light. Real, 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 real light. He's going to have a little bit on his foot. And sometimes just a little bit of tone is enough. You can see it's really popping on the gold there. But so we're going to get rid of that pink. I'm going to empty this out and get some yellow in there. So now we got our game ink yellow. I know I'm switching between ink brands, but it's what I can find. Um, going in, and you'll see immediately this color here will shift more orange. And see these that look kind of pink. Look at that. Boom. Orange. And this yellow is so weak that we can pretty much go in. We'll hit a little bit of the foot. See where that is pink? Bam. Red. Up on the cloak here. Red. <laughs> And I'm saying it over and over again, but it's really cool, like, just how you can take something that's being influenced by white, add yellow to it, and then all of a sudden you have sort of that, that heat uh, look going on instead of this interesting, weird pink. Just hitting these edge highlights that are on this uh, the hammer a little bit more, getting them hot. Looking, thinking. Oh yeah, the uh, purity seal. Put yeah. those a little bit more. Bam. All right, like that. We got just a little bit of OSL. Not going like super crazy with it. Now we're gonna work on the backpack. The only thing that's gonna be different about the backpack um, is the the flame at the top, which I'm trying to decide. I'm probably gonna just paint the whole backpack and then airbrush the flames on the uh, um, on the top here so I'm gonna go ahead and paint this wrap it mask it and then show you how to airbrush the flame we got our backpack painted and now we're gonna take a piece of parafilm this is parafilm M if you guys haven't seen any other videos it comes like this in a big roll and it's a great way to quickly mask things it's nice and stretchy and it's kind of got like a wax paper uh, wax plastic consistency so I'm just going to wrap up this backpack, get it masked, make sure we get all the flame visible. Grab one of these uh, sculpting tools here, push it down, there we go. And there we just go, like Spider-Man, wrap it up. Remember kids, wrap it up. Can afford more war games that way. And this stuff is, it's manipulated, man, manipulable? I don't know, whatever. You can manipulate it once it's on there and kind of push it where you need it. Now we can airbrush this flame. So we're going to take some white ink now. Compressor's charging up. We've got that Bombay India ink. And um, our base here already hit it, so got that white in there. We're going to do the same thing with the flame here. Just get a nice base coat on it. I'm going to try to not put... Uh, 
any expensive models in the background. My finger is not an expensive model. I get the white on here. You just want to get it like nice solid coat. All right, not even gonna wash the airbrush. Just gonna drop some sun yellow in there. I already have this sitting here from previous steps. Make sure the yellow is coming out. And then let's get our base. A nice punched yellow. This is like really fine hits of yellow using air maybe 80% of the time just to dry. Just hit, 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 let it dry. And the motion with the finger is like this really quick agitating motion. And so with our yellow coat we want to knock out all of our white. Now I just have to stick the finger in the shot for the camera to focus on what we're doing. Needs like a dis distance sensor to set it on the closest thing. Just make sure you take your time and get all those yellow bits in there, all of that color punched in. Don't leave any white. Keep kind of turning it and hitting it from different angles. And see, I didn't put that much in there. We're still we got plenty of paint. Time to dump all that out and move on to some red all right we got our red in there with some thinner about 50 50. want to keep it thin so we can build it up let the orange transition you know yellow and red make orange we're gonna start from the bottom go heavier toward the end of the flame turn it do the same thing from the bottom so we're letting the object sort of mask itself and we're getting it more orange toward the uh, the outside. Let's turn it over top down. Same thing. Heavier toward the end of the flame. Just a little bit toward the edge. Flip it over. Same thing. So if you practice doing zenithals before. That way we're not, you know, hitting everything. It's like that way we get fire, but it's top and bottom, so you see it not just from the top. When you're uh, looking at the model, you can see it from kind of all angles. So the, the shadow is bleeding in from the high points on the under and outside. And then we're going for orange toward the beginning of the flame and going for red at the end and this is a thin down red so it will turn red we keep going that's what i'm doing Just adding more pigment to the tail of the flame and i just get getting a view of my palette here while i'm working Alright, so nice clean flame. Now let's look at the base. We're gonna try and hit from the outside, so you can start just by drawing a circle around the base, right? Let it sort of bleed in to the center on its own. We'll just reinforce those areas on the outside. Right. Make the lava hotter. You see, the objects are kind of shielding themselves. See how the bubbles are getting shadowed because they're catching more of that paint? A quick and easy way to get some cool shading. I'm 
going on in there. Then we'll go back and we'll paint these stones like a dark gray and highlight them up. Oh, there we go. We got some lava. That easy. That quick. All right. I'm going to take that uh, masking off and clean out my hair. I took the mask off. I'm going to hit the tail end of this uh, fire with a little bit of indigo. Now in the image, they've used kind of a little bit of black. Um, but I like the way indigo looks if we're tailing off with kind of like a cool, smoky flame. So just aiming for the tips and letting the overspray kind of take care of everything else. There we go. We get more of that kind of hot salamander lizard flame. All right, we've gone in and base coated the brazier and the rocks with the same color. Um, so the rocks are dark blue gray, kind of the same base tone that we used in our non-metallic here. Kind of, it is the same base tone. Um, so we're going to work that up with white for the rocks here. So I'm going to continue to add white into this and do kind of a, a rough wet dry brush sort of deal. Like take a little bit of the, the excess paint off of my brush and come in and start hitting edges for sure. Getting that rocky texture in there. It'll look pretty bright when you're putting it on and then it'll tone back. You see how it's kind of, as it's drying, it's toning back. So I'm making sure to hit the edges first and then I'll work in from there. Just getting the tops of these rocks. Again, being kind of fast and loose with it, the more I kind of pause, the less random it gets. And rocks are fairly random, all the stuff that happens to them. I'm using, see, I'm using like kind of the side of the brush here and pushing the pigment around. So, not necessarily a dry brush, but kind of riding the tops with a wetter way to brush giving that stone texture and then from the outside kind of the same thing just pulling along the edges of the rocks here you see as we're going around like as it dries it tones down a little bit so you get more of that uh, that look and then we're going to do our non-metallic technique on the um, uh, what is that? Um, on the uh, brazier here, same that we have right here on the mount. So we're going to lighten everything up. Not worry about OSL with this fire, really. Just put that on there. If you are worried about OSL, you could hit the whole thing with an iron in yellow after you're done. Or go back in and touch it with the airbrush a little bit. Um, but I think it'll look better kind of individual on its own. It's already got a yellow highlight in it. So Alright, we got this uh, brazier finished up. Did it a little bit more uh, worn. Uh, thinking about, you know, dropping coal and whatever, promethium soaked uh, nuggets in there. Uh, let's finish up the base again using that sort of wet and wacky, wild, wet, dry, who knows. So thinking about, I can see his feet here, so I know what is forward on the model, is that we need to be brighter on our stone brighter on our stone on the forward side of the figure so brings that attention in looks more dynamic looks better in pictures you know because you got kind of like that light fading across the base so thinking about light coming from the front here Again, with this really kind of wet, thicker paint, as it dries, again, you can see it just sort of blending in. It goes on like super stark, you know, it's like, whew, it's real bright, and then all of a sudden it starts toning itself back as it dries. Grays typically do that. So don't be afraid when you're 
doing this step and you go, oh no, uh, I got too much, uh, too much of the ding. I gotta add a little bit of brown to my white just to make the stone a little bit more natural. And then I'm gonna make my thumb a little bit more natural too. And just trying to hit edges, but like quickly, and painterly. And layering this stuff up. It's a uh, you know just it's a little bit better than just dry brushing, right? Just taking a thing. And... You know, taking that care to kind of layer a base up after you spend so much time on a on a figure you know it's like and see how that dynamic like the the base is coming at you you know it's like if you turn it around it's like uh, you know but it's like when you get that and catch that light right and it's receding across the base it's just so cool all right i'm gonna glue him together and give some thoughts on that but there is one more step after that all right so we have him together I went in and did the same two steps with the airbrush on the side of the base here that I did on the body. So a yellow and a red right here just to show sort of that heat because the foot kind of looked funny without having that uh, reflection in there or the OSL in there. The same as happens like on the armor there. Now we're going to add battle damage. So he wanted um, some wear and tear. I like to fully finish a model before I add that. So I can kind of switch gears as a uh, mindset on what I'm doing and not doing at the same time. It some, for some reason takes me longer. So our base color for our battle damage is going to be a dark brownish black. So we have a fairly thin black here. Thin it down even more. And say we wanted to add a scratch right or scratches um, make sure my brush is is cooperating with me and I come in and go hey you know I, I did two little test things here while we were weathering and if I want to continue that let's draw a line underneath so two little black scratches there and we can do kind of a dot here right? like if there's an impact on his leg we're not going to go crazy with battle damage because um, models this big are fairly complicated already and busy. So we're going to pick areas where it'll be noticeable, but not necessarily sort of interfere with the flow of the model. Just picking things, you know, like this is a good edge to kind of scratch visible. Let's go from the underside over here. Kind of double it up. Yeah, maybe another impact over here in the shadow. And right there. We got some. And then here. Feet are always a little more messed up. I'll do a little scratch on the knee pad there. And some breaks in the consistency of the foot. That edge on that side. Let's go over here and get this guy a little bit more. Now think about what was happening when this guy was out fighting you get a scratch on his boot because he kicked an Eldar in the butt too hard like, probably maybe an orc found his armor for a little bit used it to polish up his gear Again, you don't have to go like super, super crazy. We're not going for 
nutso, like dig, 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 taking a sponge and just going crazy with it. Which is cool in its own right. Like those are valid. Not trying to to diss anybody's style or technique because I've done those weathering techniques before. Yeah, the gold, what we'll do is we'll do, we won't add any black, we'll just add streaks and highlights. It kind of gives you its own um, life. You know, this backpack's a good spot to, to hit. Same with the black, we'll just add... Add highlights that look like damage. Do something like a little bit here. Go a little bit more on the foot back here. Again, just thinking, thinking. You know, maybe he took a scratch right there. He put somebody in a headlock and they bit his armor. He's got like a little scratch on his thumb here. Over on this side. Uh, definitely something up here on this edge. I'm gonna break it up just a little bit. Something went for his face. Couple little marks and a scratch there. All right, when you get those done, take your kind of mid-tone highlight color, which is a mixture of the sick green, sick green, sick green, and the necrotic green, this one, and highlight the underside. See that? All of a sudden that looks like it's a divot. Same with these scratches. I have to lick my paint a little bit. There we go. Makes it looks like it's peeling up a little bit, right? And we are going to go in and brighten these up a little bit. So the path will be that you can take your pure necrotic and you can do a few little kind of stipples if you want. And then you can take just a tad of white. Then you're necrotic. And you can have these little, little, little accent points of like paint being peeled up there. Scratches are... Mr. Lovejoy taught me that. Scratches are never consistent. It always look better if it looks like it kind of dug in and then came out and it dug in a little bit more as it was going across the surface like there was like movement to it. So we're going to go back and highlight all this and then for our gold, let's see if I got any more paint active on my palette. I mean, you kind of almost use this color here, which is like that or a little pale yellow. If you want to add damage to gold, just do like a little nick and streak. Pop it on the end there. And you can do these uh, little jittery sort of edge highlights. Looks like kind of scratches and stuff on your gold. Alright, I'm going to work on that for a little bit. Get back. Alright, we've finished up our battle damage. I'll grab a brush so I can point to things. Um, you can see the little strong highlights that we've put under scratches. And that on the leg, on the foot. Um, over here on the back side of the bracer over here some little scratches and kind of dings and divots there um, same on the back you see here we got those little little bitty scratches I got some green on the end of my brush don't need to let that dry um, and then the gold you'll see little tiny uh, scratches and pips and dings and nicks 
I went ahead and scratched this little tiny hammer up. We might be using it to crack his walnuts. Um, some scratches over here. We left the Imperial Eagle uh, pristine because, you know, can't can't get a scratch on the Emperor's stuff, right? It's uh, protected. Um, now we're just going to black out the base, uh, and that will be it. Pending approval from um, the person who ordered it, of course. I'll send pictures, and if there are any adjustments, like he wants battle damage, more battle damage or anything, we'll do that. But we'll go home and take some hero shots, because that'll be the end of the video, at least, the video series. Just doing a black ring here to clean things up. I always think it's important to go back and sort of tidy up any little overages you have on bases. Gives that nice sort of mounted uh, presentation. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching the uh, the video and that you learned at least a few things. Hopefully a lot. And you guys out there playing salamanders. and You can take this scheme and sort of reduce it down for, for tabletop. You can use the same colors as the airbrush. Get kind of the same effect in a quicker method. And then maybe, you know, try some of this stuff out on your heroes. But that will be it. Once this ring dries, we'll put a matte varnish on there. This is the Army Painter matte varnish. I have some videos on matte varnishing if you guys are interested in that as well. But I hope you enjoyed this very long video. Again, I don't know how long it is. Probably like an hour and a half like most of them. Um, but we'll see you next time. And as always, happy painting.